What is up everyone? My name is Joseph and welcome back to Casual Competitive MTG where it is our goal to bring you semi-competitive EDH gameplay content that is both fast-paced and entertaining. In today's video, we're dialing it back a little bit more on the casually side of casually competitive. And we're going to bring you some of the new commanders from Jumpstart. Each of the players picked a deck that they found interesting, and the four decks that were decided on were Tiny Bones, Trinket Thief, Emil the Blessed, Bruvac the Grandiloquent, and finally Naeth of the Dire Hunt. Now before we get into the opening hands and deck introductions, we have a few quick channel promotions. First off, and I know I say this a lot, but we want to give a massive thank you to all of our patrons. It really does help us out a lot, and if you want to help support us in this way, there's a link in the description. If you want to pick up some casual competitive merch, we also have a link to our merch store down there as well. If you're going to be buying cards in the near future, there's a TCG affiliate link, which, after you click on, any card purchase you make will directly help the channel at no additional cost to you. And finally, we have a flip side gaming affiliate link down there as well, where if you spend $10 or more on eligible products and use our code casuallymtg at checkout, you will get a 10% discount and you will help out the channel. Also, for the month of July, we are partnering with them to do a double master's box giveaway. Details for that are in the description. And now with the promotions out of the way, let's get into the opening hands and deck introductions. Going first in this game is Adam playing Tiny Bones the Trinket Thief. The goal of this deck is to really utilize discard and specifically opponent discard in order to get a lot of value off of Tiny Bones ability. The overall goal of this deck is to keep your opponent's hands empty while keeping yours full, eventually grinding out a win with something like a Torment of Hailfire for a lot of mana, or just getting to the point where consistent activations of Tiny Bones is enough to close out the game. Adam's opening hand contained two swamps, a cavern of souls, a lotus petal, a demonic tutor, an imp's mischief, and a sudden spoiling. Going second is Bill playing Emil the Blessed. This two-color deck looks to use Emil's ability in order to get a lot of value off of ETB-based creatures, having nice synergies with something like a Seedborn Muse on the battlefield, with an Elvish Visionary and Emil on the battlefield as well, allowing you to draw a decent amount of cards, all while looking for a way to generate infinite mana through something like an Ashnod's Altar, an Eyeless Watcher, as well as a Meal the Bless producing infinite E2Bs, infinite 1-1s if needed, as well as infinite mana. Bill's opening hand contained a Forest, a Marsh Flats, an Altar of the Brood, a Land of War Elves, a Nature's Lore, a Finale of Devastation, and a Smothering Tithe. Going third is Jordan playing Bruvac the Grandiloquent. The goal of this deck is much simpler, to play a lot of petitioners and activate them to mill everyone out. The only other game plan with this deck is to just control the board until that can happen. Jordan kept six cards in his opening hand, and those cards were a Snow-Covered Island, a Mystic Sanctuary, a Mana Crypt, a Mental Misstep, an Arcane Signet, one Persistent Petitioner, and due to the London Mulligan he put a Fabricate to the bottom. And going last today is Joseph playing Naeth of the Dire Hunt. This deck looks to stacks out the board in good old Gruul style, all while using Naeth's ability to generate value by having creatures fight or just forcing his opponents to block, all while looking for a win con either involving Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker or Shaman of the Forgotten Ways. Joseph also kept six cards for this game, and his opening hand contained two forests, a soul ring, a wild growth, a Phyrexian Revoker, a Damping Sphere, and he put a Red Elemental Blast to the bottom. Remember, if you want to vote for your favorite commander from this pod, there is a Twitter poll link in the description since we can no longer use YouTube polls. And if you want to watch these games live, head on over to our Twitch channel, link in the description. And so now, without any further ado, let's get into the gameplay. Adam starts off this game by drawing, playing a Swamp as his land, and then for zero mana, casting a Lotus Petal. He then cracks his Lotus Petal, as well as tapping his Swamp to cast his commander, Tiny Bones the Trinket Thief. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Bill. Bill, on his turn, plays a forest, and then taps that forest to cast an Altar of the Brood. Not missing a beat, Jordan decides to pay 2 life to cast a Mental Misstep to successfully counter the spell. With nothing left, Bill gives the turn to Jordan. Jordan plays an Island, and then for 0 mana, casts a Mana Crypt. He then taps the Crypt to cast an Arcane Signet. He then taps his Island and Signet to cast a Persistent Petitioner, and with nothing left, gives the turn to Joseph. On his turn, Joseph plays a forest, and he then taps that forest to cast a Soul Ring. He then taps the Soul Ring to cast a Damping Sphere. With the first stacks piece on the table, he gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, plays a Swamp as his land, and then goes to combat and swings Tiny Bones at Joseph, who declares no blockers and takes one commander damage. With nothing left, Adam ships the turn to Bill. 
Bill plays a marsh flats and then immediately pays a life to crack it to fetch up a temple garden, paying two life to have it enter untapped. He then, for two mana, casts a nature's lore, which, when it resolves, gets him a tapped canopy vista to the battlefield. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Jordan. Jordan, in his upkeep, wins his mana crypt flip, not taking any damage. He then, in his first main phase, plays an island as his land, and then taps his mana sources to cast his commander, Bruvac the Grand Diloquent. In response to this creature, Adam taps his mana and pays three life to cast Withering Boon, countering the creature. Jordan has no responses, the commander is countered, and Jordan gives the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, plays a forest, and then for one mana casts a wild growth enchanting that forest. Now, for those of you at home, we did look it up. The wild growth still does work and allows him to produce two mana since the enchantment makes the mana, not the land, so it is not affected by Damping Sphere. He then taps his mana to cast a four mana Manglehorn. When it enters the battlefield, he targets Jordan's mana crypt, and in response to the ETB, Jordan taps for a blue mana to cast a Stifle. The Stifle resolves, and with nothing left, Joseph gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, plays a Swamp, and then casts a Demonic Tutor, searching a card to his hand. He then goes to combat, swings Tiny Bones at Bill, Bill takes the damage, and Adam then passes the turn. Bill untaps, and then for one mana casts a Utopia Sprawl, enchanting his forest, and when it enters, he names White. He then pays two mana for a Land of War Elves due to the Damping Sphere, and he goes to pass the turn to Jordan, and on Bill's end step, Jordan pays one mana and taps his petitioner to mill Adam for one. Jordan then goes to his turn, and in his upkeep again, wins his mana crypt flip, and then recasts Bruvac in his first main phase. With no more black counter spells, it resolves this time, and he then plays a tapped Mystic Sanctuary as his land, and then shifts the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, draws, and then taps for 4 mana to cast his commander, Naeth of the Dire Hunt. He then goes to combat and swings Manglehorn at Jordan. Jordan blocks with his petitioner and his commander, and when blockers are declared, Joseph draws. Damage is then dealt, and Manglehorn dies. With nothing left, Joseph gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps and plays a Cavern of Souls as his land, and when it enters the battlefield, he names Rogue. He then casts a Words of Waste, and then goes to combat and swings Tiny Bones at Bill. Bill declares no blockers, takes the one damage, and Adam passes the turn to Bill. Bill untaps and plays a Dryad Arbor as his land. He then for zero mana casts a Chromox, and when it enters the battlefield, he imprints Avon Mind Sensor. He then taps for five mana to cast a Smothering Tithe. The tithe resolves, and Bill gives the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps and again wins his mana crypt flip in his upkeep. He then draws and decides to pay 2 mana to negate the tithe trigger. He then taps for 2 mana to cast a Persistent Petitioner. He then goes to pass the turn to Joseph, but on Jordan's end step, Joseph pays 1 green mana to cast a Natural State targeting Words of Waste. Natural State resolves, the enchantment is destroyed, and Joseph then goes to his turn, untaps, draws, not paying for Smothering Tithe, and then immediately goes to combat, and at the beginning of combat decides to pay 3 mana into Naeus' ability to target himself to double its power and force it to be blocked. He then declares Naeth as an attacker at Bill. Bill is forced to block and blocks with his Dryad Arbor, and when Joseph's commander is blocked, he draws a card. Dryad Arbor then dies, and in Joseph's second main phase, he plays a forest as his land for turn, and then he taps his mana to cast a Collector Oof. With nothing left, Joseph gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws again not paying for Smothering Tithe, and then taps for two mana to cast a Jet Medallion. He then goes to combat and swings Tiny Bones at Bill, who again takes the damage, and Adam gives the turn to Bill. Bill untaps, and in his first main phase, taps for two mana to cast a Sylvan Library. With nothing left, he goes to pass the turn to Jordan, and on Bill's end step, Jordan again pays one mana to tap his petitioner, to this time mill two cards of Adam's Library. Jordan then goes to his turn, untaps, loses his mana crypt flip this time, draws his card, does not pay for tithe, and then for one mana, casts a Soul Ring. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, draws, does not pay for tithe, and then for two mana, casts a Phyrexian Revoker. Revoker resolves, and as it enters the battlefield, he names Persistent Petitioner. 
He then pays 2 mana for a Fendhorn Elves due to Damping Sphere, and he then goes to combat and swings his commander at Bill. Bill declares no blockers and takes the damage. Joseph then gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws, does not pay for Tithe, and then for 1 black mana casts a Dark Confidant. He then goes to combat and swings Tiny Bones at Bill, who again takes the damage. Adam then gives the turn to Bill. Bill untaps and draws two additional cards due to Sylvan Library, deciding to take eight damage to keep all three cards. He then plays a Command Tower as his land, and then taps for six mana to cast a Finale of Devastation, X equaling four. There are no responses, and he searches his library for an Eyeless Watcher, puts it onto the battlefield, and when it ETBs, it creates two Eldrazi Scions. With nothing left, Bill gives the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps, wins his Mana Crypt flip, draws his card for turn, does not pay for Tithe, and then for one blue mana, casts a Mystic Remora. In response to the Mystic Remora, Adam casts an Ulcerate targeting Joseph's commander. The Ulcerate resolves, Joseph's commander dies, and then the Mystic Remora resolves, and with nothing left, Jordan gives the turn to Joseph. Joseph goes to his turn, untapping, drawing, not paying for Tithe, and playing a Mountain as his land. He then taps for 6 mana to recast his commander, and he then goes to combat and swings Phyrexian Revoker at Bill and Collector Oof at Adam. Neither declare any blockers, they take the damage, and Joseph gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps and in his upkeep reveals a Yawgmoth Thran Physician off of the Dark Confidant trigger, losing 4 life, and he then draws a card for turn, not paying for Smothering Tithe. He then plays a Swamp as his land, and then for 3 mana, casts this Yawgmoth. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Bill. Bill untaps and draws two additional cards due to Sylvan Library, this time deciding to take four damage to just keep two of those cards. He then plays a Forest as his land, and then taps for four mana floating one off of the Land of War Elves to cast a Eldritch Evolution floating that green mana. He sacrifices the Elves as an additional cost, he doesn't pay for Mystic Remora, and in response to this cast, Jordan decides to tap for 2 mana to cast a Muddle the Mixture, countering the Tutor. Bilden uses this floating green mana to help cast a Meal the Blessed for 5 mana, again due to Damping Sphere, and when the Unicorn resolves, Bill gives the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps, loses his Mana Crypt trigger in his upkeep, pays to keep Mystic Remora around, and he then draws a card and does not pay for Smothering Tithe. He then plays an Island as his land, and for 2 mana, casts another Persistent Petitioner. With nothing left, he gives a turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, draws, does not pay for Tithe, and then immediately goes to combat. When he moves to combat, Naeth triggers, and he pays 3 mana to double Naeth's power and force him to be blocked if able. He swings this pumped up commander at Bill and his collector Oof at Adam. Bill blocks with his Eyeless Watcher, Joseph draws off of the block, does not pay for Smothering Tithe, and Adam declares no blockers, and then the damage is dealt. In his second main phase, Joseph taps his mana to cast a Stranglehold. He does not pay for Remora, and in response to the Remora trigger, Bill for one white mana casts an Enlightened Tutor, also not paying for Mystic Remora. Jordan draws off of the Remora, does not pay for Smothering Tithe, and he then taps for 1 mana to cast a Flusterstorm, targeting all of the copies at the Enlightened Tutor. Since Bill cannot pay for Flusterstorm, the Enlightened Tutor is countered, and Jordan then draws off of the original Mystic Remora trigger, not paying for Smothering Tithe. The Stranglehold then resolves, and Joseph gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, reveals a Liliana of the Veil to the Dark Confidant trigger, losing 3 life, and he then draws a card for turn, not paying for Smothering Tithe. He then taps his mana to cast a Crypt Ghast, and when the Crypt Ghast resolves, he taps his mana to cast Liliana of the Veil for 1 additional mana due to Damping Sphere, however, that's negated by the Jet Medallion, and decides to pay an additional mana to extort it. All of his opponents lose 1 life, he gains 3 life, and Jordan draws off of the Mystic Remora trigger and does not pay for Smothering Tithe. Adam then ticks up Liliana to make each player discard a card, Adam discards an Imp's Mischief, Bill a Hornet Queen, Jordan an Island, and Joseph an Orcish Lumberjack. Adam then goes to his end step and takes 1 damage and draws a card off of Tiny Bone's ability. He does not pay for Smothering Tithe, and that is now my least favorite card in existence, and he then passes the turn to Bill. Bill untaps, draws 2 additional cards due to Sylvan Library, and decides to take no additional damage and just keep the original. 
He then, with nothing to do, gives the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps and, in his upkeep, pays for Mystic Remora as well as loses his Mana Crypt trigger, taking 3 damage. He then draws, not paying for Smothering Tithe, and then, for 1 mana, casts a Ponder. He reorders the top 3 cards of his library, draws a card, does not pay for Smothering Tithe, and then gives the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, draws, and surprisingly does not pay for Smothering Tithe. He then goes to combat and his commander triggers. He decides to pay 3 mana to target Phyrexian Revoker to make it a 4-1, and swings this beefed up Phyrexian Revoker, a collector oof, and his commander at Bill. Since the Revoker has to be blocked, Adam, before moving to blockers, decides to pay 4 life to cast a Snuff Out, not paying for Mystic Remora, and then Jordan draws and does not pay for Tithe. In response to the Snuff Out, Jordan taps for 1 blue mana to cast a Swan Song to counter the removal spell. Bill then declares his commander as a blocker for Phyrexian Revoker, Joseph draws a card, does not pay for Smothering Tithe, and Bill then takes 5 damage. In his second main phase, Joseph plays a Castle Garenbrig as his land for turn, and then taps his mana to cast an Elvish Mystic, and taps additional mana to cast an Infiltration Lens, not paying for Mystic Remora. With nothing left, he gives a turn to Adam. Adam untaps, and in his upkeep reveals a Waste Knot to the Dark Confidant trigger, taking 2 damage, and then draws a card for turn, not paying for Smothering Tithe. He then for 1 black mana casts a Waste Knot, not paying for Mystic Remora, and then uses his Liliana's plus 1 ability to make everyone discard. Adam discards an Arcane Signet, Bill a Noxious Revival, Jordan an Ancient Tomb, and Joseph decides to discard a Forest. From these discards with Waste Knot, Adam gets 4 black mana and draws 1 card, doesn't pay for Smothering Tithe, and then with this floating mana, he uses it to help cast Liliana, Waker of the Dead, again not paying for Mystic Remora. He then activates this new Liliana to make everyone discard a card. Adam discards a Vampiric Tutor, Bill has nothing to discard, takes 3 damage. Jordan discards a Spell Pierce, and Joseph also has no cards in hand and takes 3 damage. Adam draws from Waste Knot, does not pay for Smothering Tithe, and he then goes to combat and swings his board at Bill for 9 damage. There is a 2-2 bird from the Swan Song that I don't know why we didn't put on the table, but that is swinging as well, dealing enough damage to take Bill out of the game. He then goes to his end step, and since an opponent discarded a card this turn, he loses a life and draws a card from the Tiny Bones trigger. In response to this trigger before the card draw, Jordan taps 4 of his petitioners to make Adam mill 12, which, with his commander out, is actually 24. Adam mills 24 cards, and he then draws a card off of the Tiny Bones trigger. With nothing left, Adam gives the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps, and in his upkeep, both does not pay for Mystic Remora, and wins his Crypt trigger. He then draws a card, and with no Smothering Tithe trigger to even worry about, taps for 2 mana to cast another Persistent Petitioner. He then passes the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, and immediately goes to combat. His commander triggers and he decides to pay 3 mana and target his Elvish Mystic to double its power and force it to be blocked. He then declares this pumped up Elvish Mystic as an attacker at Jordan and swings his commander, a Finthorn Elves, and a Collector Oof at Adam. Jordan blocks the Elf, Joseph draws a card, and Adam declares no blockers. Adam takes the damage, the Elvish Mystic dies, and in Joseph's second main phase, he taps his mana to cast a Scavenging Ooze. He then goes to pass the turn to Adam, and on Joseph's end step, Jordan taps four of his petitioners to mill Adam for another 24. Still in Joseph's end step, Jordan taps for two mana to cast a Dramatic Reversal. It resolves and he untaps all of his non-land permanents, and then, still in the end step, taps four petitioners to mill Adam for the rest of his library. With nothing left, Adam goes to his turn, reveals nothing off of Dark Confidant, and in response to moving to his draw step, Joseph pays two green mana to activate Scavenging Ooze twice to exile two of Adam's creatures from his graveyard, getting two plus one plus one counters and gaining two life. Adam then goes to his draw step, attempts to draw, and instead, loses the game. The phases pass through Adam's turn, and Jordan then goes to his turn, untaps, loses his Mana Crypt trigger, and then plays an island as his land. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Joseph. Joseph also untaps, and then taps for 2 mana to cast a Sylvan Library. He then goes to combat, and in response to his commander's trigger, taps for 4 mana, and taps his Castle Garenbrig to activate it to generate 6 green mana to be used for creature abilities. 
He uses three of this to pump up his scavenging ooze by exiling three creature cards from his own graveyard, and he uses the other three to pay into his commander's ability to target his scavenging ooze. The ooze is now a 14-7, and he declares attackers the ooze at Jordan as well as his commander. Jordan blocks the ooze with a petitioner, Joseph draws a card, and in response to moving to damage, Jordan taps for 4 petitioners to mill Joseph for 24 cards. With nothing left, Joseph goes to his second main phase, plays a tap spire garden, and gives the turn to Jordan. On Joseph's end step, Jordan pays 1 mana to activate his final petitioner to mill Joseph for 2 more cards. Jordan on his turn untaps, wins his Crypt Trigger, and then taps for 2 mana to cast another Persistent Petitioner. He then gives the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps and draws 2 additional cards due to Sylvan Library, and realizing he has fewer than 48 cards in his library, decides to take 8 damage to keep all 3. He then plays a Mana Confluence as his land, and then goes to combat, and again in response to his commander's trigger, taps and activates Castle Garenbrig for 6 green mana. He uses 5 of this to activate Scavenging Ooze 5 times to exile 5 more creatures from his own graveyard, gaining 5 more life and putting 5 more plus 1 plus 1 counters on the Ooze. He then taps for 2 more mana to activate his commander to target Collector Oof to double its power and force it to be blocked. He then swings the Oof, his commander, and this Ooze at Jordan. Jordan blocks Collector Oof, and, in response to the card draw, taps for 4 advisors to mill Joseph for 24 cards. Joseph then draws a card, the damage is dealt, Jordan takes 15 damage, and Joseph then gives the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps, loses his Mana Crypt Trigger in his upkeep, draws a card, and then taps 4 of his petitioners to mill Joseph for the final 20 cards of his library. With nothing left, he passes the turn to his friend Joseph, who untaps and in his draw step attempts to draw a card, and since he has no cards in his library, loses the game, and Jordan wins the game. Well, we hope you enjoyed a little bit of a slower paced game with some commanders that were a little more flavorful. We had a really fun time building and playing these decks, so we hope you guys enjoyed it as well. In terms of a post-game recap, the only thing I really wanted to talk about was my decision to essentially sacrifice my Phyrexian Revoker to put Jordan's Petitioners back online, because I feel like some people might not understand why I made that play, and since I was the player who was playing Nayeth, I feel like it's easy enough to talk about. The reason I did this is because I had no cards in hand and really couldn't do anything about Adam, who at that point was the biggest threat to both me and Jordan. Jordan couldn't do anything with that revoker around, and I needed someone to take care of Adam. I knew if the petitioners were online, they were focused on Adam, so bringing the petitioners back online meant I didn't have to worry about Adam, but I did have to worry about Jordan, which I felt was a longer term threat, which I believe I was correct. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to draw the cards I needed to deal with enough petitioners to not lose the game. I did think Adam was going to have one more turn, but Jordan did have that spicy and very well-timed dramatic reversal, so you can't really always see those things coming. That being said, I thought it was a really fun and good game and we hope you enjoyed it. And on that note, if you guys are interested in some of these more lower powered pods with commanders that may not be as optimal, let us know in the comments. We're interested in doing some more decks like this that are obviously higher powered, but aren't as combo-y or as easily combo-y as some other commanders that we play on the channel. So let us know what you think. That all being said, that is all we have for this video. Hopefully you guys are excited for Jumpstart and enjoyed the video as well. Like I said, I am Joseph, this is Casual Competitive MTG, and we will see you next time.